I'm not a botanical artist where I'm making something that's hyper realistic and educational. And I love botanical painting. You know, they are amazing, amazing, talented artists. But that's not really my reason for making these paintings. I'm responding to the weirdness. I'm responding to the form and the color. My inspirations can, as you can see, they're really from my life. They're pretty mundane. They're things that I come across, but they're talking about life and death, like the biggest questions that I could possibly have. I had an iris bloom that was on my kitchen windowsill right above the sink. And I was just, you know, every day I was watching it slowly fade, get increasingly transparent, sort of collapse onto itself have its structures also become revealed almost like, you know, how an old person's skin, it almost begins to look transparent. You know, I kind of saw everything like this guide to graceful aging, this way to die that, you know, there are all these things that I just felt were embodied in this iris. So I'm really, I'm making an oil painting of flowers. My intention is something much more. When you spend any time in nature, you realize that death is part of life, that it's really intertwined with life, that it's almost, it's going to sound weird, but death is almost the same thing as life, just because it's so intertwined that when something dies, something else lives or something else grows from that. They're just so intertwined and they need each other. How do you convey landscape as an artist? That's my question to myself. I love landscape paintings. George Innes, my favorite. There's so many contemporary artists that I love who make landscape paintings. But we're usually not in the landscape when we're experiencing them. We're maybe in a museum. So we're experiencing landscape as art, but we're experiencing it far away from landscape. There's a loss there. You know, at best, we're experiencing it as a memory of when we were last in the land. There's a art genre that's called relational aesthetics. And in relational aesthetics, the idea is that the art happens by the shared experience. And it's usually a unique experience. It could be a conversation. It could be a particular thing that happens over a period of time, but it's the shared experience that is the artwork and it's unique. And so in discovering this work, this really inspired me to think of the Silent Walks. So the Silent Walks are a project where I invited people to go on a walk with me through the woods, usually at night in silence. People are invited to write down their reactions to the walk at the end of the walk. I usually bring a lot of chocolate, good chocolate and fruit, and we eat a little something and we chat. We're very eager to talk after being silent for a long time. The walk is the art. It's unique. We don't know what's going to happen. We're in the woods when we're walking and we're quiet and then we're still. The animals sort of ignore us. They get accustomed to us and they ignore us and they go about their business. The walk is actually very loud. We're silent, but nothing else is silent. There's a lot of insects, there's a lot of birds, there might be wind. So it's the hearing, it's the seeing the change in light, it's experiencing the discomfort maybe of insects or cold or the wind, and it's the beauty of it, that's the art. And it's the shared experience. Usually it's different at different times, but usually we start in the light sort of around dusk, but by the time we're walking back, it's dark. So the border of ourselves, like sort of our sense of ourselves dissolves and you become very, very attentive to your surroundings because you're walking in the dark. You have the safety of walking with other people, which again is kind of like a herd, but you know, your eyes are dilating and it's this really uncanny experience. This is why to me, it's so crucial to be there. That is the thing that makes it the art. And that is the thing that you don't get when you're in a museum or looking at art in some way that's like on your phone or or mitigated through a screen. Do something where you're, you know, getting together with people and creating an opportunity, like create a show, have a show, invite people, 
get like the, your favorite artists together and invite people and have a show. So I think that's a great way to create community and create opportunity for yourself. There's no shortcuts. You got to do the work. You got to show up and just be yourself and just be genuine. And, you know, and if and hopefully it happens and try to make stuff happen for yourself as much as you can, but just, just be there for people, show up for other people, keep your actions faithful. So I think one of the hardest things to do is figure out your own voice. It's crucial and it's hard to do. And it takes a while. Have faith in yourself, listen to people, but you don't always have to take all the advice, but be open to advice, be open to it, be open to grow. This program is made possible in part through the support of New York State Council on the Arts, Orange County Government, Shapiro's Furniture, and from donations from people like you. Please consider making a donation today at www.ocartscouncil.org. Thank you.